Hello and welcome to the start of a brand new mini series where we're covering how to set up a animal based character. So in this episode we're going to start off with a wolf and go through how to set up the turning circle for an animal character that's on four legs. So let's get started right away. So I bought in the animal variety pack and the soul cave pack from the marketplace. These are free assets provided to you by Epic on the marketplace. Uh, so help yourself to them and inside animal variety pack we've got a crow we've got a deer stag a fox pig and a wolf and we're going to mess about with the wolf uh animal and their animations and we're going to create the character using this one i'm using the soul cave here just for a nice backdrop okay so let's go ahead and create the wolf character so we're going to create a new blueprint class and you can choose the character node here and we'll do call this one wolf character now, you've got the option of using a pawn or a character. Um, character does save you a lot of time when setting up the movement stuff, as it does have a lot of that already calculated for you. Uh, we just have to obviously customize it to suit a, a, a quadruped like a uh, wolf. Let's go inside our wolf character here and let's go to the mesh. And we're going to search for our wolf mesh. And there it is. Okay, and let's just rotate that around so it's facing the right way. And we'll bring it down to the center. Now you will need to change the height of the capsule to better suit the animal that you've chosen. So just go to a capsule component here and just tweak the half height so it suits more the height of the animal itself. At the moment, we're not too worried about the uh the head or the tail poking out. But what I'm gonna do is we're going to poke out the head, put the head sorry back into the capsule a little bit more. Um, for the sole reason that you're more likely to be moving forwards than you are moving backwards so it would be more applicable for us to use that there so I've lined it up here to the front feet here um, but for now that will do Hit compile and save that okay so that is our mesh in there we now need to set up the animation blueprint to allow our character here to move so let's create the animation blueprint for our wolf, I'm going to choose the wolf skeleton and wolf anim. And inside here is where we set up the various animation states. Let's create a state machine. And the state machine is there to help organize uh, what state they're currently in, whether they're idle, walking, uh, jumping, whatever it may be. So we do this one as default. Uh, we've got default. And inside there, we can set up two states. We're going to set up idle and we're going to set up moving. So add state. Oh, yeah, again, add state, idle, and from there, another one for moving. And in idle here, we're going to put in our idle animation that we have on our list. So idle breath, look around, and aggressive. We'll just do idle breath or breathe. Uh, moving note is going to be a blend space. So we have to make a blend space for this. Let's go back to our animations folder. I'm going to create a animation blend space. Um, now for a blend space, we want to pick 2D. And choose wolf skeleton. Moving, uh, we'll just call it wolf. Moving BS for blend space. And in here, we set up the direction and speed for the different axes. So let's go to asset details, look at the horizontal axis and vertical axis. Horizontal here will be direction. And that will go from minus 180 to 180. Actually, sorry, um, we'll do minus 90 and 90. Uh, the reason why we want to do that is because he does not have a walking backwards animation. He can only walk forwards and turn left and right. So we'll just use minus 90 and 90. And the vertical axis here, we're going to use speed. So we can determine when he's running compared to when he's walking. So that's going to go from 0 to 600. Okay, so let's put in our different animations we've got in here. So we've got walk and we've got turn and turn for both directions. Put walk in here, put it right in the middle. 
and we put turn left the far left here and turn right on the far right so here i'm not choosing group motion ones i'm using the default ones that come with it that just in place but there he is there are different animations doing that okay and we don't want to do the now the same for run so do run there run left run right okay so running turning left right Let's save this and then close this down. Let's go to our moving state now and put in that blend space that we just made. We need to promote the direction speed to variables. So right click on each of these and promote to variable. So that way we can set those values up. And let's go back and then back again. And I'm just gonna place this directly into the output pose for now and compile that. So at the moment we need to identify when it can go from idle to moving. So let's go to our state machine here and determine that transition rule. This transition rule we'll be looking at the speed value. So take speed here and we're gonna look if it's greater than zero. That in there. And if we wanna go back now from moving to idle, that would be when speed is less than or equal to zero and so I just made a mistake this one should be yeah that's right that's right greater than it compile and that should clear any warnings that you may have because now you can transition just fine okay so let's go to the event graph and on the event graph we're going to put in some basic stuff to get the direction and speed values from our pawn so from the try get pawn owner we're going to drag this out and get the velocity and they'll give us the speed and direction from just the velocity alone so to get the speed, you get the vector length of this velocity. That's our speed. And the direction, you search for direction. You'll see calculate direction. And in this, you just need to give it the base rotation of the character. So the pawn owner get rotation of the character. And that'll be direction. I'm going to plug that into the update animation. Okay, so that is that done. Let's go back to our wolf character and set up it to use that animation blueprint. So with the mesh selected, go to your anim class and we can choose the wolf anim. There he is. Uh, so all we have to do now is set up the inputs for him to actually move. Let's go to event graph and take a look at doing the move forwards. And this is input action to allow it to move forward. So let's do add input. I'm going to do add movement input. And that'll go into the axis value. And the world direction will be whichever way our um, controller is looking. Okay. So we're going to get the control rotation. And we want to uh, break this. Actually, I'll tell you what, we'll just split it rather than that. And we'll do make rotator. And we're just going to use the yaw for this. Don't care about the roller pitch. And then from that rotator, we want to get the forward vector to give us this direction. So you may be familiar with using the scale value and axis value together to determine when you're walking forwards or backwards. However, in this case, our wolf can only go forwards. So what we want to do is clamp this so it doesn't allow it to go below zero. So we do clamp float and we'll put that between zero and one into the scale value there. Okay, so if I do try and push S to go backwards, it will just be zero because it will just clamp it to that value. Uh, next we're gonna do the move right. So move right. And on this one, we're going to take the right vector. And in this case, we for now, I'm just going to put in the add movement input as you're probably used to doing. But this is the one that's going to be changing a lot because we are looking at doing um, uh, turning circles for our animals in the moment. So axis value will go into scale value like normal, but the right vector will go into world direction like normal. So 
that's the basic movement for our uh, character here. Next, we need to set up the control rotations with the mouse. So we're going to go to turn. And the turn action we're going to do is add your. And that value is going to go into axis value. We'll do look up as well. And we'll do pitch. Add controller pitch input and plug that into axis value as well. Okay, so we've got basic movement stuff set up minus the walking backwards. So as I mentioned before, the turning circle of, a, of the animal is going to be very different because unlike a human, a human can turn on the spot and it doesn't look too weird. But if an animal did that, it would look kind of odd. So what we need to do is add a little turning circle to them. So what we're going to do here is go, first of all, to our character's class defaults and tell it to not use the controller the rotation yaw. I'm going to turn that off. That way he won't turn around as soon as we move the mouse. Next, I want to go to the character movement and go down to the rotation settings. And for rotation, I want to orient rotation to movement. So I'm going to tick that. And we're going to change the rotation rate down a lot. So 360 means it's going to turn 360 degrees in a single second. We're going to turn that down a lot to, let's say, um, let's say 120. Okay. And hit compile and save. Let's see how this looks. And this will need a bit of fine tuning to get that turning just right. Hold on, let's put a wolf into the scene. And tell it to be possessed by default by player zero. And we don't have a camera on it. Hang on. Let's put a camera on him. So spring arm. And then camera. And we don't want that attached to the mesh, so disconnect that. And the spring arm here, we want to just um, tell it to use pawn control rotation so it stays behind them like so just gonna offset that a little bit so we're not looking at his feet and we're good to go there right let's hit play okay so there's our wolf and as you can see we've now got movement and as i turn my mouse his body's going to turn to match the control angle Okay. Now, this is quite a varied landscape, so he's going to be moving through and clipping through some stuff. Not really designed for an animal. Um, and he has no IK set up, so he, his feet will go through stuff if they do clip. But the general gist of it is there. Okay. So the next thing we're going to be working on is getting him to rotate and position himself correctly so it isn't so floaty in the air and clipping through stuff and that his body will actually rotate along inclines so if we take a look at this incline here and you can see how like his body just stays level it doesn't change at all and it should look like he's going downhill versus going uphill so that's what we're going to be doing there okay now to increase the turning circle before we go on to any of that um there's the issue that we want to fix here let me get into the center here so you can see this so if I turn right, our, he's doing like a sort of sidestep before he actually turns. In realistically, what would happen is he would actually move forwards based on his head position. So whichever way his head's going is where he would be turning. So what we actually need to do is add a bit of forward movement to this as well. And that's going to be based upon the head. So to improve the turning circle, what we're going to do is make him follow the direction of his body as well as turning right and left. So we're going to get the actor's rotation. And then from that, I want to split this and take the yaw only. And we're going to do make rotator. And then that will go into the yaw there too. And then we want to take this and get the forward vector of it. We get forward vector and this forward vector we want to um plug into and add to our right vector here so when we're moving forwards we're uh, moving right sorry we're actually going to move forwards as well based on the character's rotation 
Now this forward vector here would be simply added to the right vector, but what we want to do is multiply this right vector by the axis value because sometimes we're moving, moving left, and therefore we need the left vector first. So let's multiply the right vector here by a float and by this axis value. And then we're going to add this to our get forward vector. So we've got a new directional vector here. Okay. Then we want to need to do is normalize this. Otherwise, this will make him go really fast going to the right or left because now his vector is twice as large. So if I change this to be a normalized value, it would solve that for us. And we're going to put that into our world direction, like so. Okay. Uh, the last thing we need to do is change the axis value here to not be the scale value. Otherwise, what we'll do is when we push left, our key will be inverted, meaning that we won't be going forwards anymore, we'll be going backwards, which isn't correct. So we're going to take the axis value here and do absolute and then plug that in. And what that will do is it'll make sure that the value is always positive. So, and that works fine for us because the right vector is getting multiplied by its original value anyway. So if I do push left, it will do the left hand turn. So that's not an issue for us. So let's compile that and take a look at our turning animation now. So in the game here, let's be going forwards. If I hold down just D on my keyboard, you see how his body actually moves forward a little bit rather than just turning right. So let's just do it again, but for left, you can see him turning and moving forwards at the same time. So it's a lot more realistic, a lot more what you expect to see from a quadruped like a wolf here. Um, so it's not finished yet. There are a few things we need to finish doing with the turning circle, but we'll do that in the next few videos, such as, for example, if I turn all the way to the right or turn all the way to the left, I now can't turn to the right easily. Okay. So I have to move my control rotation first. So all those things we were working on and improving that, also making it change based upon the speed of the character as well. So the turning circle is different based upon their speed. Okay, so when you walk, it's a lot tighter than say when you're running like this. And there we have it. We've got a basic setup for our character now where they've got a turning circle based upon their character's location, rotation, and control input. In the next episode, we're going to continue setting up their character's controls and settings to be able to jump and attack. So join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can catch all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. It wouldn't be possible without you guys, so thank you again so much. Make sure you're subscribed, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.